this hard? This is tedious, but it is not difficult. Yeah, it's tedious, but not difficult. All right, this is the parent function, y equals x squared. This is the basic shape. You saw this yesterday. It's y equals x squared. Then you can do all kinds of things to it, right? X-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. Y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. And you have a vertex, like you did for absolute values. You have a vertex. And you have what's called an axis of symmetry, which cuts it in half. Okay, axis symmetry cuts it in half. The vertex form looks like this. You say y equals a x minus h squared plus k. You saw this yesterday. That is the vertex form. Because h k is the vertex. Yes. If a is positive, it is concave up. If A is negative, it is concave down. And I'll explain what that is in a second. Is that focused? Yes, it is. All right, thank you. Because since the monitor got connected to that thing, my monitor is not focused. All right. So what does it mean to be concave up? If you have this shape going this way, that's concave up. If you have it going, I guess I won't have one. So concave down, so this is concave up like that, and concave down is like that, right? No big leap there. Okay, um, what else is there? Axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. It's going to be x equal h. Okay? And we're going to talk about maximum mins. If it is concave up, if it is concave up, the vertex is a minimum. If it is concave up, the vertex is a minimum. If it's concave down, right, it will look like this. Then the vertex is a maximum. All right? We'll go through an example where you see all that's addressed. Here we go. We ready? Or do I need to leave it up here? Hello? Hi. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So we only have two examples to work through, but they are kind of tedious. Example one. So here's my function. So what's the vertex? And my vertex is negative 2, negative 7. Remember, it's always the opposite of the inside the parentheses. And then you put your key at the same sign when it's outside the parentheses. And the axis of symmetry is x equals the x value, so negative 2. Make sure you give me x equals negative 2. Just writing negative 2 is not adequate because the axis of symmetry is a line. If you just give me negative 2, that's not a line, right? Axis x equals negative 2 is a line, right? We're talking about this line. This is a line. Is this concave up or down? Did you forget your glasses? Uh. All right. Concave up or down? Uh. So if you have... Thank you. I thought you were saying something else. All right. It's concave up because the leading coefficient, the number up front, is a 1, right? If you don't see a number, the number is 1. So is it going to be a minimum or a maximum? Yes. Minimum. If it's concave up, it's a minimum. You could just circle it for those. OK, we're going to skip x intercept and y intercept for a second. Can, can I have a question? Yeah. Why is it minimum? OK, if it's concave up, Right? That means it looks like this. Then the vertex is a minimum. That means that's the lowest point. If it's flipped the other way, if it's concave down, that means it's flipped this way, the vertex is a maximum. Okay. So when they talk about a minimum or maximum, we're talking about the vertex. Is the vertex a minimum? Is the vertex a maximum? Okay. All right? We're going to hold off on x and y intercept. 
the domain for all of these is all real. That's not going to change until probably the fourth quarter, right? All the functions we're dealing with, oh, I just lied. We're going to study square roots soon. How could you? I'm a liar. You're fired. I'm fired. All right. See you guys next week. All right, range. <laughs> What's um, ENF? I said we're going to hold off on that after we graph it. And how do you know it's all real? It's all, all real. Every single one? Okay, all right, a parabola is a polynomial. A parabola <coughs> is a polynomial. Polynomials, the domain is all real numbers. And what happens with domain is, is there any restriction on what numbers you can put for x? Since there is no restriction on what numbers you can put for x, that's why it's all real, okay? There's a restriction with square roots because you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's why it's not all real for square roots. But we're just dealing with these. Range. Range is, you can look at Five. the minimum and the vertex, okay? So it's going to be Y. If it's a minimum, it's going to be greater than or equal to. Five. Where are you getting five from? Range is the difference between the large and small. Okay. In this context, that is not the case, okay? The range here is negative seven. Y is greater than or equal to negative seven. Okay, so w when we use the word range in this context, well, it's not the statistical value of range. So what you said was the statistical value of range. This is what values do I have for the output? Okay, that's a difference. All right, ready? So if it's a minimum, you're gonna put y is greater than or equal to, and it's always the y value. So the y value makes up the range. The x value makes up the axis of symmetry. All right. Now we're going to take this ordered pair and put it in the middle of the chart. You're putting it in the middle of the chart. And then you're going to count backwards. So negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. You're going to count backwards up and you're going to count forwards down. So it's going to be negative 1 and 0. These y values you're going to find by just substituting these x values into the function. So we're going to plug negative 4 into this function. So that's when you pull out your calculator. Pull out your calculator. You need your calculator. I'll work it. Yes, batteries. I do. At least I think I did. Okay, so I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x, so that would be parentheses, negative 4, plus 2, close parentheses, square, minus 7. Okay, make sure you do it correctly, I get a negative 3. If you do it in your head and you don't get that same answer, make sure you fix your head. All right, I'm plugging in negative 3, so I just go back, pick it up, change the negative 4 to a negative 3. Oops, I didn't change it correctly. Right. Negative 3, not 34. So that's negative 6. Plug in negative 1. Negative six. Plug in zero, and I get zero. negative three. Yes. Oh, that makes sense. It does. No. 
All right, ready? Now we're going to plot these points. So we got negative 4, negative 3, which is here. Negative 3, negative 6, which is here. And negative 2, negative 7, here. Negative 1, negative 6, 0, negative 3. And then we wing it. Yes. You want to go as high as least the x-intercept. So it shows the maximum. This is a minimum. So the minimum would be negative 7. The minimum is negative 7, yeah. All right, let's talk about the x-intercepts. So here, I'm going to be very lenient on what you think the x-intercepts are, okay? I'm going to look at your graph to look at your answers, right? So in my graph, my x-intercept is about negative 4.5. So negative 4.5, comma, and my x-intercept over here is about 0.5. So I'll be looking at your graph to determine your x-intercepts, okay? So what if we put like 4.7 or 4.6? Then you put 4.7 or 4.6. Uh, if you think it's not 0.5, write whatever you think it is. It just depends on how we draw the line. Yeah. Now, later on, we're going to be more strict, but we'll have other techniques other than just winging it, okay? Now, the y-intercept, the y-intercept, you're going to find, so this one, I can look and see the y-intercept is negative 3. Do you understand that? Where it's crossing the y-axis. But sometimes, you won't see it cross the y-axis. If you don't see it cross the y-axis, just put a 0 for x, and that'll give you the y-intercept. Can I see just, you? Huh? Can I see you? Thing on the left. Right, so I got two numbers for the x-intercept. Okay, looking at this parabola, or looking at parabolas in general, do I have to have an x-intercept? Why not? How can I draw this so I don't have an x-intercept? You can't. You can't. Right. I mean, a parabola, right? So I can have a parabola that's like floating up here. That won't have an x-intercept. OK? Can I make it so that there's one x-intercept? Uh, huh? Yes. Like this one. This one has one x-intercept, where the vertex touches the x-axis. Can you imagine having no y-intercept? No, this has to cross the y-axis. So even if when you draw it, it doesn't cross the y-axis, just plug in 0 for x, and that'll give you the y-intercept. All right? All right, last example. What is the vertex of this example? What's the vertex? Negative one, three. Negative one, three. What's the axis of symmetry? Negative one. X equals negative one. Is it concave up or down? Down. 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 Max or min? Max. Max. Okay, we're going to skip X and Y intercept. Domain, all real. What's the range? Y is? Less than or equal to less than or equal to 3. Very good. Right, it's less than because it's a maximum. If it's a maximum, you say less than. And that y value is just the y value of the vertex. Okay? All right. So you put the negative 1, 3 in the middle. And count backwards. What's that? Negative 2, negative 3. Count forwards. It's 0 and 1. Plug in that number. Watch your signs on this, people trying to do it in their heads. Ooh. I'm getting, did you guys get negative one for negative three? I got four. You got four? Did I do something wrong? Yeah. You have to add the plus 30. 
Yeah. So this is what I did in the calculator. Right? There's a negative out front, and then parentheses negative three plus one, exponent of two, then plus three. Why is this one down? Oh, okay. Did you just ask why is the concave down? There's a negative number in the front. Uh, negative number in the front means concave down. Gotcha. Alright, plug in negative two. Where'd you get the Where'd I get negative one? Plug in negative two. Well, where do you get these um the x values from? Alright, so do you know how I got negative one three? Yeah. Alright. So I just counted backwards from there and counted forwards from here. So subtract one, I get negative two. Subtract another one, I get negative three. And then I have plus one, negative one plus zero. I'm sorry, negative one plus one is zero. Zero plus one is one. Did you understand that? So where do you start? From the vertex. So that's where the vertex comes. I start from that one. And then go backwards and go forward. Huh? So you take it's not a negative one, it's a positive one. That's where you start at? I started at the vertex, right? Negative one three is the vertex, and then I counted backwards to get the x values above, and counted forwards to get the x values below. Okay. Yeah. You do not distribute the two because of the exponent. All right. So negative two, if I plug in negative two, did you guys get an answer for that yet? Four. You get four for that? That's what I got. Okay, I will double check real quick. If I plug in negative two, I don't get four. I got two. I got two. All right. Hi. Why are you getting Do you have a negative sign up front there? What happens when you plug in zero? Zero. Two again. And then negative one. And then negative one. Anybody notice the pattern yet? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's like If you get these numbers up top, you should get the same numbers on the bottom. Shut up. <laughs> That's a good way to check to see if you're on the right track. You get negative one and two. I plugged in negative three into my function. Right? So here, the function is negative sign. So I put a negative sign and then parentheses. And instead of writing x, I put in the number I want to plug in. Negative one. I plug in negative three. What? I'm plugging in these x values. Remember you asked me where these x values came from? I'm plugging in these Are x values. Are you plugging all of them? Yes, all of them. Okay. So that's negative three. And then, uh huh, plus one, close parentheses to the power of two. To the power of two plus three. Plus three. Right. And that's how I get negative one. So that's the y value. That's the y value. Hello. Hi. What? What? Did you do that right? Because on the graph it looks weird. Okay. All right. Let's look. So negative three, negative one is here. Right? And negative 2, 2 is up here. Right. And negative 1, 3 is up here. Yeah? And then 0, 2 is here. And 1, negative 1 is here. Perfect. Okay? And then I wing it. How do you know right off the bat if it's back to the over minimum? Okay, remember the middle is the vertex, right? Remember the middle is the vertex? Tucker, Sir. middle is the vertex, right? And it was concave down. Do you remember what's concave down? Concave down because there's a negative up front. If it was positive, it would be minimum? Yes. If it was positive, would it be concave? Concave up. Oh, okay. All right. And then here, where does it cross? 
2.7. Okay, that'll work. So x intercept is negative 2.7. What's the other one? Okay, I'm not getting one. I'm getting like 0.5. All right, what's the y intercept? Right, the y is right here. All right, that's the end of the example.